So example 5.14, we're given 9 grams of sodium hydroxide, which is a salt, and it's going to be dissolved in 100 grams of water. So this is the process of dissolving. Um, what's the final temperature of the solution? And so what we'll notice is we've been given the dissolution of sodium hydroxide. So once you put it in water, it breaks into its cations and anions. And this process has a delta H that's negative 45.7 kilojoules. So the first thing we have to recognize is that this is an exothermic process. So essentially you have your sodium hydroxide and it's going to be placed in a container of water and when you place your sodium hydroxide in the water it breaks into the sodium ions and the hydroxide ions this process is exothermic so when these two separate they're going to release heat energy and it's going to go into the water and so essentially the water is absorbing that energy so the heat of the water, which is endothermic, absorbing heat, is equal to the heat released by the NaOH. And so this kind of brings us to our equation. So once the heat energy is released from the sodium hydroxide into the water, we want to know what's the temperature going to end up being after this is over. So we're going to take the Q of water and substitute in CS times grams times the delta T because this is the equation whenever there's a temperature change. And then we're going to substitute in for the breaking apart of sodium hydroxide. The Q is going to be equal to moles times the delta H. You can kind of think of this as like chemical energy because they're kind of they're being broken apart and the release of breaking them apart is the enthalpy of breaking apart sodium hydroxide times however much sodium hydroxide we place into the solution which in our, our case is 9.0 grams now we're going to substitute in our values where the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree celsius and this is going to be times the mass in grams, but we have a special kind of a little star right here. There's something important that we're going to have to recognize. So this is the Q for water, and we're going to use the specific heat of water. However, what we have is the mass of the entire solution that we have to take into consideration because the temperature change is of the mass of the entire system. So really the mass here is going to be 9.00 grams of the sodium hydroxide plus the 100 grams of water. All right, we're going to multiply this times the change in temperature. We don't know the final temperature minus but the original temperature was 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then this is equal to negative, and in order to find the moles of sodium hydroxide, we have to take the grams that we're given of sodium hydroxide and divide it by its molar mass, which is 40.0 grams, and so this is equal to the moles of the sodium hydroxide. We're going to multiply this times the delta H, which is given as negative 45.7 kilojoules, and that would be per one mole sodium hydroxide. Okay, so there's the setup of our equation, and here is what we are trying to solve for and isolate. So let's do some simplifying. So we have 4.184 times combine 109 so we have 109 times and then we have tf minus 25 and that is equal to and when i do 9 divided by 40 times negative 45.7 times negative 1 i get 1.028 times 10 to the 4. okay now i'll multiply these two values and that'll give me 456.06 
That's going to be multiplied by TF minus 25, which equals 1.028 times 10 to the fourth. And now we need to distribute this value here. And so we get 456.06, .06, and that's TF minus, and then this value times negative 25 gives me minus 11401. I'm going to add this number to both sides of the equation, so that leaves me with 456.06 TF equals, when I add these two numbers to each other, I get 21,681. And now I'll divide both sides by 456.06, which gives me a temperature, final temperature of 47.5 degrees Celsius.